Alright guys, welcome back to your second tutorial, and now that we saw all the cool functionality of this bad boy, let's go ahead and get styling this. So before I get started, I do want to say thank you to Emily May, that's the girl who actually showed me this, it was on a website called CodeCanyon.net, and I actually had to mod the crap out of it, so it was compatible for my website, but anyways, thank you, and uh, well, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I want to do in the CSS file is just set the background and this is because whenever you're working with a plain white background that you have by default on every website it doesn't really look that great because all of the transparency settings you can't really see so whenever you're developing this and you want to tweak the transparency then the first thing you should always do is get your background set first so that's what I want to do and you can actually use any background that you want but for me, I'm just going to go ahead and put body, and this is how you change the background, to an image at least. Background, URL, and in URL, you just go ahead and write any image that you have. Now, I actually have a file already called image wood wallpaper.jpg. Now, I know you guys um, don't have this image, but actually, if you just go to Google and type in hardwood, backgrounds or repeating hardwood or seamless hardwood then it's going to give you a bunch of uh, good hardwood that you can use for your background just don't type in hardwood because then a bunch of wieners are probably going to pop up and you know no one wants to see that repeat now that's all you need and of course you don't have this file yet you can use hardwood like I have right here or any other file you can even use a solid color if you prefer but it looks cooler when you have some texture and this repeat right here what this means is that you want to repeat this picture horizontal and vertically now I say that because usually whenever you're making a background for the website you don't have you know a 2000 by you know 1920 by 1200 picture usually you just have a 200 by 200 square and it gets tiled so this repeat keyword means that it gets repeated vertical and horizontally so after we have the background let's just go ahead and style the footer now what this is going to be is basically the overall footer basically the entire thing all inclusive so the first thing we want to do this is we want to make sure that it sticks to the bottom of the web page so just like a toolbar this footer right here is going to stick to the bottom obviously so how do we do that well the position of this hex has to be fixed. Now what fixed means is that fixed positioning is necessary whenever you want it to stick to the bottom. That's all you need to remember. So right now we told our browser that this toolbar is fixed, but we didn't say where in the browser it's fixed. So now let's go ahead and do that. Bottom, zero pixels, which basically means stick it to the bottom. There is no separation between the bottom of the browser and the footer margin 0 padding 0 and then we can just do left 0 right 0 we're basically setting everything to 0 and what left and right does and also along with this width whenever you put it at 100% it says that there is no space between the left and the right hand side and it basically takes up 100% width. Now you can actually have this where you have some space to the left or right but I don't really like that. Um, for now this is how you develop this. You can always tweak it later. Now for the height what we want to do is we want to go ahead and set it at 40 pixels. So this entire toolbar or the footer is 40 pixels tall. Now you actually want to go ahead and remember that because whenever you're adding these images or these notification icons then you wanna you know take note of how tall they actually are and make sure they don't exceed this 40 pixel limit so now let's just go ahead and set some overall properties font family Arial, um, text shadow now what text shadow is is basically 
um, exactly what you think. It's the shadow of the text. Now, usually I don't like text shadow whenever I'm developing a web page, but for this, it's actually, I don't want to say um, necessary because, you know, you can develop it any way you want, but it makes it a lot easier to read, especially when you have a lighter background. You don't want white text on a light background without a shadow. So in order to make a text shadow, go ahead and write this. One pixel, one pixel, one pixel, black. And if you guys aren't familiar with this property, what this basically is saying is that the horizontal, vertical, blur are all one pixel. So, so move it to the right one pixel, down one pixel, and blur it one pixel. And also the shadow is going to be black. If you have like a yellow shadow, it looks kind of like a glow. Fun little tip. Now, let me just go ahead and tighten this bad boy up. Now what I want to do is I want to start building that glass effect. So if we go ahead and we save this right now, and obviously we didn't do anything with the HTML file, but if this was thrown in just like this, it wouldn't look like it looks right now. It would just be a plain, dumb looking boring looking drop up menu. In order to add this cool transparent and glass effect what we need to do is we need to tap in the resources of CSS3 and we need to tap into transparent colors and also I'm gonna show you guys how to use multiple shadows to give you guys this gleaming glass awesome transparent look and that's what I'm gonna be doing in the next tutorial so I'll see you then.